you know what? I was installing some, um, All right. at that time when you had called me, I was installing uh, well, I had some software to like oh, okay. do some streaming because yeah. I was going to do a Double Dragon stream real quick. Oh, okay. You know what? If they do the online patch, we got to play together. On oh, of course. That, that's the main reason why I want to play is to play it with you guys. Yeah, all right, cool. Good stuff. Good stuff. All right, all right Alex, so, you're good to go. All right, in three, two, one. What's going on, NMO fans? This is your host, Alex Alexis, with co host Nelson Rios, coming to you with this broadcast. And we have esteemed guests today. So we have um, staff member Demizel and On Your Knees, and our old sponsor, Tough Nerd Toys, Mr. AKA Dene Shogeki. So, do you have any Pleasure words? Pleasure to meet you, for everybody. Us? Good to see you. <laughs> so, you know, just to give you guys a little backstory, I know Tough Nerd Toys for a long time. It's a good friend of mine. Do not he say knows by age. I'm old as hell. <laughs> <laughs> I can't say nothing because I'm gonna blow my spot up too. But um, I, I just want to—I want to let you guys know, Tough Nerd Toys has been helping NMO since the very beginning, the very beginning, and. He's a valued friend, just like Nelson and the rest of my crew here. NMO and Fighting Game League is like a little family here. So, you know, outside of Indeed. Yes, you know, our podcast, yeah, we, we are very close. And that's why, you know, I, we've been trying to work this to get uh, Tough Nerd on the podcast. So, you know, I just want to introduce him. Nupe, we don't know where you at. So, Nupe, hey, I was looking for you, bro. So, that's on you. But uh, let's jump right into this thing. Now, NMO fans, Fighter Game League fans, the Wii U is now generating buzz, okay? They already revealed the price for the, the, the two packages that are coming out, all right? It already was on uh, Eyewitness News and all that. They're talking about, oh, Nintendo's new system, you know? And there's just a couple of things. We got some subtopics for the, uh, the Wii U, but the first things first, I don't know if you remember NMO fans. I'm a big fan of Bayonetta. That's a great game. Okay, Platinum Games developed, and you know I see Dene <laughs> responding. It's a, it's a good game, you know. That game was fantastic. But, Not yes, because you are, but was. that game was simply fantastic. Uh, it, well, well crafted. Well, the presentation was just on point. However, there was a video that uh, I saw Alpha Omega Sin uh, talk about where it was canceled temporarily due to Sena uh, Sega's financial uh, strife. Now, all of a sudden, it has resurfaced, but it's a Wii U exclusive. Well, Nelson had already told me that, okay, it's going to be a timed exclusive. I'll, I'll look that up, but, you know, I believe Nelson. Nelson always, you know, brings us uh, up-to-date information. <coughs> but we're going to go around the table. We're going to give our guests the floor first. We'll go to Nelson, Chris, and Demizel. Uh Danae, what do you think about this Bayonetta 2 Wii U exclusive deal. Uh, what's going on with that? Basically, you can tell Sega, all right, basically, you can tell Sega is like, how can I put it, putting themselves in a safe zone. So it is, uh, if it's a launch title, it'll sell, bottom line. Mm. Secondly, mm. secondly, me, myself, I don't care what console is really on, but I would, I, I'm it's going to take more than that to like for me to really like invest in the new system like the Wii U or whatever the case may be. And don't get me wrong, I'm a diehard Bayonetta fan. I love Bayonetta. Bayonetta was an outstanding game. It's what Devil May Cry should have been. Exactly. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. But mm -hmm. at the same token, I mean, it's at the point to where Sega, Sega, Sega is definitely doing that because they want. They want this game to sell. And I'm going to be honest with you. If they were to put this out on this console that's pretty much running this course, it's pretty much at its, like, you know, on its last leg, like the PS3, the Xbox 360, it's not really going to sell projected sales at all. It's not going to. And as I told you before, I love video games. And, um, you know, I, I, you can pretty much say I've been there since its inception. But at the same token, it's about numbers. It's all about numbers, yeah. and it's all about it, making it, it, money. That, and this, and this sense. right here, by it being a launch title for Wii U, it will sell. Because you have mm -hmm. to understand, too, another thing, Alex, is that Bayonetta and other games as such, because of the advent of multiplayers, et cetera, et cetera, Bayonetta has become a cult. It's a cult it has a cult following. Not everyone's going to pick it up. You know what I mean? Like a but if, it's a, if yeah. it's a new thing on the Wii U, they'll, they'll just grab it because it's with the Wii U. 
Okay. So, Nelson, what are your thoughts on uh, the Bayonetta? And, uh, you know, you can elaborate on uh, what we are talking about uh, on the pre-podcast. Oh, okay. <clears throat> well, from as far as I know, I don't like the fact that it's going to be a time exclusive for the <laughs> Wii U, simply because uh-huh. it came out, you know, first in uh, 360 and PS3. And to me, it would just be better off that way because you will have more diehard fans on that besides going out to get a $350 console just to buy another game that might not even do so well as Nintendo promises. But from what I'm hearing, that's what the deal was. Nintendo made a deal with Platinum Games to basically improve their um, their sales and to do much better than what they did on their counterpart from the Xbox 360 and the PlayStation. So if they can promise mm-hmm. that, then by all means, let them. But... As what Platinum Games said, if they don't do well with Nintendo, the time exclusive mark will end and it will come out for every other console and also PC. Okay, now I wanted to interject real fast with that. You have to keep in mind, and Danae will back me up on this, Nintendo is catered for kids. You know, we have all outgrown Nintendo, but... I know for the most part, you know, you, you got the diehard that will stick with the Mario, the Mario Kart, and the Donkey Kong, and I get that, you know. But how is it that they're going to all of a sudden miraculously get more hardcore and the Bayonetta fans to go purchase a new console to, for this for the one game, you know? Then they made a good point, you know. We use the first of the new systems, so hey, get established with that first, and then when the other systems come out, okay, then we'll put it out. Okay, now here's the thing that also hurt Bayonetta, the fact that, okay, you only had two systems for it to come out on. The Wii, actually, if it was more powerful, you know, I think it would have had an iteration of Bayonetta in this gen, and they probably would have seen, you know, better uh, internal revenue, you know. But that's just, you know, my take on it. But um, I'm going to give On Your Knees some time and then Demizzle. So, Chris, what do you think of this whole Wii U approach? Uh, I'm not sure if the with the time exclusive or if they're holding out for uh, the next gen on Xbox or Sony or if they're just waiting for uh, to see if it does well on the Wii U and then decide if whether to push it on the current consoles or the next gen for the other ones. So that would be mm-hmm. what I would want to watch out for. But uh, otherwise, it, Danae hit it on the head. Um, it's going to be a launch title. Uh, launch titles usually sell really well considering... Uh, I'm not sure how many they plan to launch, but I read something earlier where they plan to have 50 games between launch and I think end the first quarter, uh, 2013. So they're act- if they hit their mark, there's going to actually be a lot of games, so I'm not sure how well it would sell at that point. But um, mm-hmm. I, I'm probably the exception in the room. I never really got into Bayonetta. Uh, mm-hmm. So you guys can gush it over all you want. I'm just... If, to me, it felt like a saturated market. That's why I never picked that one up. But No, okay. uh, not to cut you off, <laughs> you definitely have to pick that up. Believe me on your knees. It is a, it is a it very, is a good game. very good game. It is a very yeah. good game. And to be honest, She's... I'm going to be honest, what I heard, when I heard, and I, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I just had to tell you on your knees, you got to pick that game up. It's well worth the price tag on it. Believe me. It'll yeah. actually feel it... like... It'll actually give you hope within the creative process that's going on with video games now because it's totally different. It's it's within the 3D running around, fighting and shooting, everything, but it, it works. It has, like, nice little cutscenes, cinematic, like, cinematic finishers. You'll definitely enjoy it. But oh, yeah, continue. No, I'm the, sorry. those cinematic finishers are pretty cool. Exactly. And you know the what? Game, I the think, game is I think uh, Devil it's May Cry creative. might have been a lot better had Platinum Games, the original team. It feels like exactly. Devil May Cry won. You know, so if if you, mm-hmm. I, I, it's a high, it's a recommendation, just like I recommend it, Asura's Wrath. But you know, I don't want to neglect uh, Demizel. Demizel, what are your thoughts on uh, a Platinum Games' approach to Bayonetta with the time exclusive and the Wii U? Well, I think it's kind of uh, wrong the direction they're going because they said like uh, Nintendo promised triple the sales of what the original Bayonetta did, and I highly doubt that's going to happen. And just to uh, voice my opinion on something you said, that you believe Bayonetta sales would have been better if it was on three systems. And I Mm -hmm. totally disagree with that, because there are, like, tons of games that are only out on the 360 and PlayStation 3 that did immensely better than Bayonetta. Mm -hmm. 
So okay, the enough, problem buddy. isn't the problem isn't that there wasn't enough consoles for it to be on. The problem was marketing. They just simply didn't market the game and get it out there the way they should have. Like prime example, um Splinter Cell uh, Conviction is on only on oh. Xbox three sixty, but that game sold three and a half million copies. And yet you can't sell a million copies over two systems. There's something wrong mm. with your marketing and PR system, if that's the case. Mm -hmm. It's not a case They probably of, don't have it in their budget to market the right way, you know? So, I mean, hell, with the Splinter Cell I game, you saw commercials during WWE uh, programming and, and stuff. You I saw doubt it that, in places. I doubt that, too, because Sega had just put out Sonic Colors on the Wii, and that sold a lot more than Bayonetta as well. So you can't say mm -hmm. it wasn't in the budget. It's just that nobody mm -hmm. cared about the game. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then they want to say that, hey, we're going to cut. This is going to be on the chopping block. If they're not doing what they're supposed to do, then, hey, you, you can only point it yourself like Capcom has to, you know. But they just need right. to the problem is they just need to the that, Those guys are worse. <laughs> <laughs> they just need to generate interest for the game, plain and simple. And... The way you do that is like you get you get the game on commercials during like uh, the target audience would be like people who watch wrestling, people who watch Spike TV, people who watch uh, G4 TV. If it, well, it's not in existence anymore, but people who watch that kind of programming, you need to get it on during those hours where people will see those commercials. You gotta get it during like those stupid rollover ads that you can't avoid rolling over on the internet. Since mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. uh, since print media is going out of style, like not a lot of people will pay attention to advertisements and magazines. So you gotta yep, yep. come up with new ways. Okay, uh, you know what, Demizel? You know, I 100% I agree with you on that one. All right. So just shifting gears, we're still on the Wii U, but the price has been revealed. Nelson can actually flesh that out a little more, but there's the two bundles. So, Nelson, uh, give us some details on that. And then, uh, Danae, I, I just want to get your response, and we'll just go around the table. All right, basically. But, uh, yeah, Nelson, yeah, you – oh, go ahead. My all right, basically, there's two bundles. There's the standard bundle, which basically comes with the game pad. It comes with an HDMI cable and, like, like one other peripheral and that's it and then with the the other bundle which is called the deluxe bundle they're offering you like a lot more including the sensor bar including um a free a free game demo that's supposed to be coming out things like nintendo land or something like that and plus it's more gig mm -hmm. gig memory on the the actual console so that, that's basically what they're offering mm -hmm. you it's either you could get like the the shitty bundle or you could just get the recommended bundle which has the more gigs which of course you're obviously going to need because they're going to take the route of installing the games just like the playstation 3 is so mm -hmm. all right now before i give uh the floor to the name mm. nelson with the wii u is the memory expandable in there will it be like the 360 and ps3 or is you it have gonna to be buy like your own iPad? hard drive. I believe, <laughs> I believe as far as... that's to keep the cost down. As, as far yeah, as I that's know... What I was, I, you must have been reading my mind, Demizel, because when I read up on it, I was like, wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was like, here you see, we today, go. We're here. I knew, I knew that, that's what it was all about, because yeah. otherwise, it would have been like a four or $500 system. Yeah, because as far as uh -huh. I know, it's, um, it has either three ways of using extra memory. You can either use the SD cards, which you were using back in the Nintendo Wii, you can link up your external hard drive in order for it to like sap out some memory because it's not the same way how Xbox and PlayStation 3 works. It's its own little memory bank. So it's a little bit more less memory mm -hmm. than what it takes up for its games. That or they're going to implement the mm -hmm. cloud system just like what Xbox has been doing as well. Oh, okay. So, Danae, what are your thoughts on that? Basically, I mean, like, you know, it's not anything new or, or pretty much like that we haven't seen before. I mean, every couple of years, really, when you think about it, we had a nice long run with these, uh, like, with the current systems we're playing on now. It's not as, um, they're not canceling the consoles like they, as fast as they did, like, back in the past, like, with yeah. the Nintendo, the Genesis, so on and so forth. This one, when you think about it, the Xbox, the PS3, they've had a lengthy life. They've had a lengthy mm -hmm. life. And, you know, like, nobody really, like, nobody wants to pretty much, like, relinquish what they're, what they're used to. We're, we're creatures of habit. 
But at the same token, we do we do accept the new like it's like you know like like anything else. But in terms of like the finance, looking at the financial aspect of it, it people I trust me when I tell you people are gonna buy the economic version versus the uh, the bundle pack. Believe me when I tell you, because. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times they really don't see it as like like they're like like they're going to spend more. They're just looking at like, yo, I could get this for this, that, and the other, this price and the other. When in turn, if you just get the bundle, you might as well you pretty much get more. But yeah, and knows? you're saving money over the long run because if you think about it, if you think all that stuff that's going to come with it that you have to buy separately, you're going to probably right. be shelling out a lot more dough. So that's just oh, something yeah, yeah, that, yeah, yeah, that yeah. consumers yeah. should be keeping in mind. So on your knees, I give you the floor on that topic. Uh, let's, um, with, the, with this, it's um, not a bad price point, actually. Um, I ran into something uh, recently I could show you guys later. Uh, in terms of consoles, when adjusted for inflation, Wii U is actually one of the cheapest ever released. So it's uh, my, my most surprising thing was that the controller, the, um, the controller with the screen is actually half the cost. Uh, I think they're retailing for, the in Japan, it's going to retail for 180 uh, with the controller by itself, which is a rather, you know, it is expensive for one controller. Um, mm-hmm. But you, they estimate that you're going to be able to use two per console. Um, mm-hmm. it, it's, it does scream of a massive gimmick, uh, but everyone said that about the Nintendo Wii, and that did rather well, at least with casual gamers. So I suspect this will do the same thing again. In terms of mm-hmm. reaching a hardcore or a mature audience, Bayonetta seems to be going that direction, but Nintendo's always taken a half-hearted approach to reaching mature gamers. They occasionally mm-hmm. have a hit like Resident Evil 4 on Cube, uh, Mad World, and a few others on Wii, but nothing really stands out to hit that hardcore gaming spot. But the money I have the to say, gamer. oh, I'm sorry. So that's, right, that's where they're going to aim for. And mm-hmm. now with the, they're trying to capitalize on the fact that the, the iPad is the quote-unquote most popular gaming console now, or gaming system. So that's why they, I think they rolled out with the screen to try to do something different, which, you know, it's, it's cool that they're trying to do something different. But in terms of how well it'll be implemented, we'll have to see what's going on there. Okay. Now, before I give the floor to Demizel, you do know about the Microsoft Smart Glass uh, initiative, right? Where everything that that Wii U controller can do with the, the smart the glass you, yeah you'll be able to do like with multiple devices so it's like if microsoft sits there and like all right they're waiting like you're playing street fighter and they counter pick you or something you know and nintendo's brave for always they, hey they go balls in first you know like they they go out there they they they're always first in the water you know, so but sometimes it can be it's a good thing because they have an early jump on the market. They can start selling their product. They're the first the new kids on the block with their with their uh, their product there. But, you know, it may slow over time. Look what happened to the Wii. The gimmick. Everybody was like, you, you couldn't find a Wii. And I, I bet you Nintendo is going to go the same route of. Uh, putting limited amount of consoles in GameStops in certain places. They're releasing it around the November time frame, same time as the Wii, uh, when it was released, and right into the holiday season. They know exactly what they're doing. Exactly what they're doing. Of course they do. Nintendo Nintendo, Nintendo is a mark. They they are the marketing geniuses within the gaming field. Because the simple fact that whether you know it or not, they've already captured the psychological aspect of um of selling games because mm-hmm. any all right perfect example if you're a parent say like you're a casual like a not you're not even a gaming parent if you're a parent and your child asks for a video game what's the first thing that's going to come to mind to get your child there you go mm-hmm. because for one no, thing my parents, for one thing and today not to cut you off like my parents mm-hmm. are, aren't from the country but any system with my father's thick accent, Nintendo, Nintendo. That exactly. everything. The PlayStation exactly. is Nintendo. Exactly. The Xbox is Nintendo. You know, so it's just like you know, Nintendo build a rapport where it's just like the whole exactly. Hogan name they're, to they're wrestling. Gonna, they're like gonna every, constantly. They're always gonna make money. Nintendo is mm-hmm. always gonna make money. If they say, as long as they capture that child audience, they're always going to make money. Really, to be honest, they could. I'm, they they focus on the adult on the adult and the mature themes, but I really don't think that's that it's that's their main concern. It's lukewarm, like on your knees. Yeah, it's, very it's, it's not warm. their main concern. It's not their mm-hmm. main concern. But you know, if they have their niche, why deviate from it? You know, like it just 
why you know, not? If it works for why them, not? Why not keep that mm-hmm. niche and add another niche on? That, that that's true. That's true. D- you know what, I mean? what are your thoughts? Well, I like totally disagree with everybody. Like I I think Nintendo is gonna like fall flat on its face on this okay. one. This is documented talk- NMO fans. <laughs> <laughs> no, he could be right. He could be right because you have to understand the casual consumer is now becoming a casual gamer. And the casual gamer, at, in the long run, like, if, like I know some parents now. Like, they become like you, Denise? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, like that's, that's the point. That's the point I'm going to make. Like, they're trying to capture, like, the audience that the 360 and the PlayStation 3 already have. Like, the right. people, like, they, uh, there's a stat out there, like, 90% of Wii owners own a PlayStation 3 or Xbox 360 as their second console. It's so, not their first. Yeah, mm-hmm. and it's like, you're trying to get these people who are already committed to the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 by saying, hey, we can do that now, too. whoop de doo Big fucking deal. So you have the same games. <laughs> so but it's fine. Like, it's about it's time. It's been, shown through, it's been shown throughout time. Perfect example. Sony. Perfect example. Um, Sony used to... Really, I would say, like, a good seven, eight years ago, when you thought about, a bit, like, you wanted a good video game console, you thought about Sony. We're not even going. We're not even going to go into the Dreamcast aspect and everything like that. That's a whole yeah, yeah, different that's... monster in itself. All right. Mm-hmm. But a lot of you thought about Sony, then in Sony, that. then Sony. <laughs> then you know, little by little, Microsoft started coming up there, doing their little. They did the Xbox One. They did the Xbox, and then by the time Xbox 360 came out, they had just totally like. Pretty much yeah, but Sony the, to, the, but to, the, to the wolves. Like they, I mean, the they totally between, trampled over Sony's crowd and snatched it away from them. Yeah, but the difference between that and this is that Microsoft, like, built their own, like, crowd. They have their own fans, and while they were doing the same thing that Sony was doing, they're like, hey, look, we're doing what Sony's doing, but we can do it better, and this is how. And they went out mm-hmm. and actually did it better because they had... They bought the Xbox Live. They bought the 16-player first-person shooter online games. They bought, like, like they expanded on, like, the uh, Dreamcast Online. Because the Dreamcast Sega Net was, like, a huge success. But it didn't exactly. have a chance to Because we all know off. within the gaming field that the Dreamcast was nothing but an Xbox, but an Xbox 0.1. That's it. Yeah, that, that's true. Yeah. That was very true. Like, that's you know what, what people don't know? Xbox Live, the, uh, the original, you know, format or the blueprint format came from Sega Net. It came from the online on the Dreamcast. You there know? you go. And then same thing with the online, like, with the browser and everything. Janae, remember us at that particular oh, store man. with the three letters? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know. He said us at a um, particular store. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, I'm just... Uh, you know, I was looking at a particular thing that we can't talk about, but, you know, right. it's just, I, know, I, know I saw so many similarities to it. So Microsoft was really actually behind Sega. Like, they were, you know, with the Sega Saturn, they were making their OSs and all that. Windows CE, Microsoft was helping mm-hmm. Sega at yes, one point. Indeed. But now it, it reversed the role. Microsoft said, hey, let me... Let, let, let's get out there. Let's take on Sony. And like Zemenso said, we'll show you how to do it right. You know? Right. And it was only four right. guys that went to Bill Gates. They're like, hey, you know what? Let's get into the console thing. And Bill Gates said, hey, how much money you need? Bam. And then now you have that empire. And Zemenso is so right with, with what he said. They took the first-person shooter guys who are probably PC guys and – migrated over they had a different fan base nintendo what and they're pretty trying much to do in, they pretty pull much from, innovated what was already in play yeah yeah and then you see nintendo's trying to pull from existing crowds of on uh, other consoles and like dimenzo says they're already committed you know what i mean like but see, nintendo you know, have but I'm, to I'm, really... I'm not disavowing what you say at all dimenzo but at the same token you got to look at it like this nintendo has always basically i would say since the PlayStation 1 came out, and the, and the Dreamcast came out. Nintendo basically always survived off of children. That's all they ever did. Yeah. So, yeah, like, but I that, mean, but they'll, they'll not, live. But, 
that's not who they're going after, though. Like, they're you going can see after, in the... They're going you can after see in them, the game. But... No, no they're not even going after kids. Because look at their releases. No, 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 look no what... I'm saying they're going after the adult crowd. But they don't really, really, to be honest, I really don't think Nintendo really and really cares about the adult crowd in the sense that as far as they like, don't uh, looking at it from the financial I, standpoint or a lucrative standpoint they're basically focused on the crowd that they already have and that crowd is robust I, and that are that is I children dis i disagree wholeheartedly because look at that releases look at look at the feature that is targeted as the main feature the pad like how many kids do you know walking around with Four and five hundred dollar iPads. Not many, bro. But they're let me tell you they're something. Gonna, let me tell you, get let me tell you something about the power <laughs> of math. Let me tell you the power, the power of Nintendo marketing. Okay, Nintendo has a way. Believe me when I tell you. How many kids did you see running around with with um, what are them, them noon chuck thing? No kid really wanted that at first and stuff like that. They wanted a pad. Nintendo forced them into that. Nintendo has a, has, believe me when I tell you, they have a fantastic psychological um, marketing team. Believe me when I tell you. Mm. Believe me. Well, Nintendo, <laughs> Nintendo they, let they me tell you survived. something. Nintendo, I looked at Nintendo sales, right? Right now, do you know every Friday, from Friday, Saturday to Sunday, they make sales in well over, in, in, in the United States alone, well over in the millions. Every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Because of the simple fact that parents are going to go out and get their kids Nintendo stuff. Plain and, and I've seen this. And, to, and you know, it to happens. caveat on that, I've Believe seen this because I've been missile. in GameStop. They and you're like, mommy, mommy, you know. This right yep, here, yep. Grab, grabbing the adult crowd is nothing but preliminary or like or like pretty much like small fries compared to the compared to the stuff that they're pulling in. And you got to get Can I stop you guys too. for a second? An, can, can I stop you uh -huh. guys for a second? Mm -hmm. What I think that Nintendo is trying to do with the Wii U is what they did with the SNES. The SNES was a complete system. It had teenagers, it had some adult right. people with Mortal Kombat 2. It was like an all-inclusive thing, and that was Nintendo's most, wasn't it its most successful console? I may be wrong. Yeah, but yeah. It, 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 the SNES was. It, it, and, and it edged uh -huh. out. It edged out the Sega Genesis uh, towards the end of the life cycle because, like games like Super Castlevania 4 or the remake of the original right. Castlevania, Act Razor. You know, you had some great freaking games on there. You know what I mean? But it catered to everybody, and a, a good system needs to be able to have something for everybody. Like Microsoft started doing with the Kinect and with the rumored Kinect 2 coming out. You know what I mean? Am I right, Danae, when I say this? Because yep. my little cousin and my uncle, my aunt came over, and they're like, they they don't play games, but hell, they're all not connect, like, like hardcore. My, my younger sister, because they're I brought her. They're, they're adapting in the same, they're adapting in the same, uh, what I call, what I what I would call the same uh, marketing strategy that that Nintendo was doing. Like they're they're like you know what Nintendo attracts people. They like I told you before they have a psychological team, bro. Believe me when I tell you, you can a perfect example. I can turn that Nintendo Wii on and leave it up front. I won't touch it. But um, but my niece and nephew will come through there. Then my mother, she'll probably come over to my house and pick it up and start doing stupid stuff with it. She be like, ooh ooh ooh. They know <laughs> what they're doing. Their mm -hmm. ease of access. They're catered to children, and they they, they pretty much they pretty much grasp the primal the primal side of an individual, and make it fun. Believe me when I mm -hmm. tell you. I'm telling you, Nintendo, Nintendo, and don't get me wrong. I'm not saying like they're gonna blow Xbox out the water right now. Whether you guys know it or not, we are at a very pivotal moment in video gaming history. Believe me when I tell you, a very the, pivotal uh, moment. Some changes may we're be seeing, occurring. We're seeing the bad. The good and video games are to to totally taking a different course right now. It's it's not because even, it's not, they're not even video games no more. <laughs> the interactive media. Oh, man. And Asura's Wrath at was the example. first look to at go your that dashboard. Route. Yeah, look at your dashboard. Look at your dashboard on your Xbox. I remember a time when you went on a dashboard. When you went on a dashboard, you saw arcade games, the new arcade games. Now you pretty much have to search for the arcade games on there. They want you to see the crackle. They want you to buy Netflix, this that, and the other ESPN, so on and so forth. It's become they want you, they want your console to become this one central hub. You understand what I'm saying? That's why the and Sony admitted are it, off. and Microsoft admitted that too. They, 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 both those companies admitted that they want that to be the sole, yeah, not the sole thing, look, but look. like a, a big, big thing, you know, like, and Microsoft can't afford to have people 
migrating away from PCs because it would trump their sales for, you know, OS right, and stuff like right. that. Sony can't afford that because if they make the PS3 more computer-like, you know, their desktop and their VIOs and th their sales will go down. You know what I mean? So it's kind of, it's like a balance. They have to find a way to, to balance that. But, you know, I have to shift gears because, you know, we probably be here all night. But the next topic is the Wii U controller, the Pro. Now, here, the controversy here is some people are saying they blatantly stole the design for the Xbox 360 controller. Now, here, here, here are my thoughts before uh, I go around the table. It's a good and a bad thing, you know. But you see, Sony, when if you had anybody else try to copy their controller, all of a sudden you, you, you're smelling lawsuits. Now, Microsoft, now their their controller was pretty much, you know, doppelganged or something, a copy. You know what I mean? Well, with the only difference with the controller, the face button and the right analog stick are just swapped. Okay? The good strategy with this is now that they're able or the Wii U can handle some of the, the, the games like Tech and Tag Tournament, Call of Duty, and stuff like that, you're going to need a controller that, that can stand up to the new console controllers. You know what I mean? You can't have that little... You know, uh, we pad because I had it for Tatsunoko versus Capcom. To me, it wasn't really cutting it, you know. But I think it was a, a nice attempt by Nintendo. I don't know if it, lawsuits will, you know, pop up as a result. But it's just something that Nintendo had had to go that route because of the type of games that we know that the Wii U was going to start getting, you know. So uh, on your knees, I'll give you the floor, Nelson. Then I'll give the Mizzle, and today I'll give you last, but. Chris, what do you think about this controller uh, controversy? Yeah, I want to say someone's going to sue somebody, but who the hell knows with the way things are these days. Um, yeah, it's, you know, it's like you said, it's good and bad. It's, you know, a comfortable feel. You just pick it up and go. You don't have to worry about adjusting for anything, especially if you already have um, either iteration of the Xbox. But, uh, yeah, I mean... They needed a controller, but I think they could have done something better than this, or at least something different. But, mm -hmm. but the way everyone is, uh, everyone's being sue happy. So uh, unless they already paid off Xbox or whoever owns the patent for that controller design, which they may have already done, um, uh -huh. that's probably why they may have released it. But uh, mm -hmm. you know, it's I'm not gonna say it's a bad design. I mean, it works for Xbox. Why not work for Wii? Um, and mm -hmm. like you said, the only difference is the location on the uh, the right analog and the buttons on the right side. And uh, yeah, I mean. I don't know. It, it's it does scream blatant rip off to me, but we'll have to see what what goes on from there. Okay. All right, Nelson. What are your thoughts on the Wii U controller Pro? It's basically like what um Anyani said. It's a blatant rip off. I mean, if you look at it from every angle, it's basically an Xbox 360 controller. No matter how much you're gonna try to change it by adding an all white surface, adding an indicator on the bottom to tell you <laughs> what number the controller is or whatever. It's an Xbox 360 I'm, controller, guys. I'm telling you, I fucking love d <laughs> I mean, Nelson. I, I love Nelson. He's like, it doesn't matter. It, it, it don't. And you can clearly see that there's going to be a lot of issues. Probably not right now, but give it take. When Nintendo uh, Wii U does come out and they go in their marketing sales and Microsoft sees that that peripheral controller is selling well, they will not be hesitant to be like, oh, you're getting sued. Straight up and done. But if it doesn't yeah, do yeah. so well, yeah, I bet no you will let it slide. Course. Bet you will slide. You know that's what? True. That, that right there in a nutshell could sum up my last <laughs> part of it because that's exactly how it's going to go. The minute they start making money off it and like, them sales start going through, they're like, you know what? Hit the button. Yep. <laughs> Microsoft's like this. They're like, do it, Nintendo. Do it. Do it. <laughs> yep. All right, Divizzo, what are your thoughts on this before uh, we move on to our last two topics? I honestly think Microsoft doesn't care because there's like 50 million knockoffs on the PC market already, so I doubt that they care that Nintendo mm -hmm. ripped off their design that much. If they but did, it's a competitor, would... though. That, it's a direct competitor. That's the only difference. I didn't mean to cut you off. You see, the, the knockoff controllers, I get it. But on a Nintendo system, when these games like with EA and Call of Duty and all that stuff start showing up on the Wii U, and like Danae was saying, when they start seeing a decline, 
all of a sudden you can see him on that button. They're gonna like, eh, and then that and that's that's where the fight is gonna it. start. I doubt it because if it was gonna happen, it would have happened already. They're not gonna. But wait. what do they have to go what? off of? You know what I mean? Like you 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 gotta see where when the titles start coming out for it, and then you start seeing a, a slump on the Microsoft side of things. Um, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen I doubt, at, on I some doubt level. Gonna, on some level. I but, doubt it's gonna happen because, like, you've got the next Microsoft and Sony machines about a year out from all indicators. So I doubt they really care that much. To so be like, uh, they ripped off our control design. Big deal. Our new machine is gonna come out in about a year and crush that. And what if they so, are using the same, the existing 360 controllers? Then what then? I doubt because we don't know anything this, about that. I thought they're gonna come with the same existing controller as is. They're probably gonna add some new feature to it. Mm -hmm. Well, considering with the whole smart glass initiative, we don't know what the new uh, controller for the 360 is going or 720 or whatever they're gonna freaking call it. But uh, one last thing on on the console um, topic. Okay, I just now that I got majority of NMO fighting game league and uh, tough no toys here, uh, with the PlayStation Orbis not supporting any backwards compatibility whatsoever, how is that? And I I just wanted to get Danae, uh I wanted to get your point on this because Nelson and I already discussed it on a past podcast, but you know. It's just like, they're saying, fuck you, PS3 guys. Fuck you, PS2 guys. Fuck you, PS1 guys. You know what I mean? Because, you know, some of, some of us still have the system where it plays all three uh, formats. Right. Then you got the ones that only plays PS2, one that does PS1 games and PS3 games or whatever. But to have no backwards compatibility whatsoever, what? what mm. Danae, what are your thoughts? Basically, you're going to buy it. You're going to buy it and you're going to deal with it. Plain and simple. Mm. I ain't buying a lot that of shit. people like, because you know, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to be honest with you. A lot of people complain <laughs> about so much stuff with Xbox, not supporting Xbox One games. This, it's a matter of moving forward. That's all they care about, moving forward and buy. That's it. Mm -hmm. Purchase well, console you know, and you know why that thing with Xbox and One no, I don't approve of it at all. I think it's fucked yeah. up. You know, I think it's real messed up. But at the same token, I mean, what can you do? But Sony, it's their, it's their stuff. Like it's their, like for instance, Sony? with the first PS3s that came out, they had the the, the chipsets from PS1 and PS2 exactly. inside the PS3. Now you see with the Xbox One, they tried to do the backwards compatibility, but you know Nvidia tried to screw Microsoft. Microsoft right, said, "Fuck right. you, you know we're, we're we're not dealing with that. You're trying to gouge us and whatever." So what they decided to do, go with ATI, and then. Put the ATI compatibility on the next system so that you can right. have your backwards compatibility there. Fuck you, NVIDIA, for doing that shit. We lost a lot of games because of your punk-ass motherfucking bitches. Anyway, so moving well, on. Well, see, as far as, as far as Sony, Sony makes some... Sony reminds me of a scientist with ADD, a mad scientist with ADD, all right? <laughs> because of the simple fact, they'll come out with these beautiful and wonderful products, and they're like, they'll be like, oh, yeah, and I got, I got Beast Man with the whip and this, that, and the other, but... But you know what? Yeah, 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 buy this one. But you know what? Then we're going to start working on this, this, that, and the other. And we got this. We got a gun and all that. You'll be like, what about the Beast Man you just sold me? <laughs> you know, you can still add, like, you can still add stuff to it and pretty much, like, give them a That's cape why I'm or whatever the case like, may be. With, with, with my Vita, I'm like, hey, they need to come out with some more games or this. And just, see, you know. you know what? And what did I tell you about that Vita? Remember when we, when we <laughs> both first got this? Got it, right? I already knew. Yeah. I already knew what Sony was going to do with it. I already knew what Sony. Mm. Sony develops some of the best products, but do not innovate, nor do they continue developing on their products. They just leave mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. the play, I'm going to be honest with you. If they really played their cards right, because on the hacker's end, I mean, like, not, I'm, I'm, I'll say it. I've modded, I've modded my, my um, what do you call those things that I had? PSPs. The PSPs. The, the, the PlayStation. Um, Portable. The old ones. The Sony? Yeah, the PlayStation Portable. Yeah, one of these. These things. Yeah. Yeah, one of these things. I, I bought my PSP. Too. I turned it into a phone. 
I turned it into this. I had it streaming cable. I had it doing all sorts of stuff. Stuff that the things that they could do, they can incorporate and charge a price tag for. But and no, why they let the Sony doesn't do, do that. Yeah, yep. Sony doesn't yep. do that. To me, it's a, it's kind of like a smack in the face because it's like, as a company, if I saw like everyday Joe Schmoes out there like revamping my 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 hardware and everything, and I'm not doing anything with it, I would be like, you know what? All of you guys in down in down in um, R and D are fired. Plain and simple, mm -hmm. or something, mm -hmm. something, something. Because you I see, look what they did to the PS3. They herbed it. They took the Linux OS out of it, and you know that guy that filed exactly. the lawsuit. Exactly. Why and he would won? you take Linux out of it? Like that's crazy. Like it, it's it's just it's just madness. Like I said before, Sony. So if Sony really falls by the wayside and ends up like pretty much totally like falling out of the console game, they have no one to blame but themselves. No one to blame. But, but you know what? I don't know if it was on your knees or Demenzo. One of you guys told me that. Uh, or if it was Dirty Nerd uh, toys on Xbox Live, one of them, mm -hmm. somebody told me that uh, the PS3 or the, the PS Orbis, part of the reason why it's not going to be backwards compatible is because of the cell processor. They're, they're, they're doing away with it because it's too hard to program for, like, what, what was happening well, with that the was Sega it. You remember, that was the problem, the reason why, because you know Devil May Cry, well, I think it was Devil May Cry 5, 4, which was mm -hmm. the last Devil May Cry? Four. It was uh, four. Four. You yeah, know Devil May Cry was supposed to be an exclusive launch title for PS3. Really? But because of the difficulty in programming for it and everything like that, they just it went multi It was early on. It was almost a launch console. title, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. it was supposed it, it, to be I'll... specifically for PlayStation 3. Wow. Remember? Think back. It was supposed to be specifically for PlayStation 3. And because and of the, when I heard it was coming out on Xbox, program, I'm like, really? Finally, you know? Exactly. I'm like, okay. Mm -hmm. Really? Interesting. All right. Yeah, so, look it up. All right, I, I, I definitely will. All right, so we're pretty much done with the console portion of this. It's just two Metal Gear topics that we're going to get on. Um, Nelson had brought to my attention that Metal Gear Solid Ground Zeroes will not come out on Xbox 360 in Japan. Now, Nelson, can you flesh this out for us? Well, just to re-change what you said, it wasn't Ground Zero that I was speaking about. It was Metal Gear Rising that is not coming out. Rising? A rising, oh. yeah. Metal Gear Rising will not be coming out on the Xbox 360 in Japan, but it will still come out here. Why? Reason being was because of the fact that Marketing-wise, in Japan, Xbox never do, never did well to begin with. I know. Xbox is pretty much non-existent over there. Right, exactly. So what they're doing mm -hmm. is they're basically telling Microsoft, it's okay, we don't need this within our region, but give us the, you know, the Sony because that's what we basically built our structure on by playing nothing right. but PlayStation. So, I mean, that's on them. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's going to be like a hard fall for Japan in general, but there are mm -hmm. about, give it, take like, 10% people in Japan that actually do own an Xbox 360 and only <clears throat> own that console. So they're kind of being taken away from it. So the only thing they can do is now they will have to buy our version from the Western side and then port it back mm -hmm. to them so they can actually play it on their console. Mm -hmm. That's if it's region free. It, it will be. You know, it will be. be just, just like how they made Anarchy mm -hmm. and that's like how they made Anarchy Reigns a region uh, free that it's called uh, Max Anarchy <clears throat> in Japan. If you used to go to let's say if you're in New York, you go to Japan, buy the game, put it on your Xbox, it'll work just as mm -hmm. fine. Subtitles and everything. Mm -hmm. So nice. No, All right. Correct me yeah. if I'm wrong. Anarchy Reigns was supposed to be like part two to um, Nintendo's. Uh, what was that? One of my favorite Mad games. Mad World. Mad World. Right. And it was horrible. It, it's supposed to be somewhat... <laughs> Look, Danae, you put me on Mad World. I, I actually like that game. It, it was pretty Yo, cool. Mad but World then... was fantastic, it, It's bro. not... The art it didn't style. Hold me <laughs> Mad World was, it was gimmick. Fantastic. It's not like a direct sequel, uh -huh. but it's within the same world. It's within the same world. And Platinum it's Games hard. just basically like grew upon it to make it like this ridiculous beat em up fighting game which actually could be played on a 3D realm just one on one or you can have up to I think 32 people fighting each other and kicking each other's ass you, you know Danae, the Anarchy Reigns looks like uh, Spawn for the Dreamcast the four player oh, yeah, uh, Spawn the demons in the demons yeah, hand I, right I, 
Yeah, yeah, I think that that's the the route because when Nelson showed me the video, I saw Bayonetta running around. I'm like, wait a minute, this looks like Spawn for the Dreamcast, you know? Yeah. But that that looks like a lot of fun because Spawn on Dreamcast was a fucking good game, and and it didn't Spawn get Spawn was the, Spawn was good. That was a great Power game. Power Stone One was good. I mean, Dreamcast like that. I really and I know you get tired of me saying this, but I really believe that last era of great creative gaming ended with the Dreamcast. The Dreamcast and PS2. I really believe that because, like, this watch, rinse, repeat formula that they're doing with video games now, uh, it's, 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 it's becoming disgusting. I actually go on Xbox and just talk now. I barely play anything anymore. <laughs> I know. No more <laughs> uh, Tough Notorious parties because, especially after Oh, yeah, yeah. I would just warn anybody that's watching this part <laughs> podcast, do not come in my parties if you have, like, nervous conditions or, like, you're easily offended. My parties are free and open. It's just wild in there. It's like, it's like fifth grade don't, don't all over again with a substitute teacher. <laughs> don't play Uno with those guys. If you don't want to see something, then, you know, hey, yo. I'm just going to leave it there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. Listen, Nelson came to my party one time. I have not seen him again since. He <laughs> 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 came to my party once. Oh, man. Not, to, not, to, not to interrupt this, I'm going to make this real short. It was a girl in the room oh, God. that was upset oh, no. over house, high school of the dead because she saw panties. Now, I said that's the least thing uh -oh. I'm worried about when I'm watching high school of the dead. I'm watching zombie action. I, who, who cares about the panties? Like, you know what I'm saying? No, but she specifically, she offended, no, like, she specifically got, like, in depth was like, oh, it's like red polka dot yeah, panties. Yeah, she was livid. I mean, like, this girl wanted, this girl wanted, like, she was like, why did you tell me to look at that? It's offensive. And, and, and they're making me look at the panties. I said, what are you talking about? <laughs> you know those striped panties with the, the, the striped panties that the girl had on. They were striped. I said, I didn't even know the panties on on um it's high like school she was the like, like, why are you like looking at the like pants? zoomed in on it <laughs> yeah she, like, she, she was like on it. she like and then her boobies made noise i was like what are you talking about <laughs> Uh, you know, Animal Fans, Fighting Game League Fans, and you, uh, the audience of Tefner Toys, uh, you know, I, I can't even put the disclaimer unless I take this and edit it before I go to YouTube, so we'll, we'll, we'll see. But um, that this, th those are pretty much the topics, um, I, because I know that we're going to shift gears between Nelson and whomever is going to remain for the 3D fighting game discussion. Because that that's probably that needs to be on. Oh zone. God! But um, I, I yeah, I, I just wanted to, to sign off on this one. I'd like to thank Tuffner Toys, our our sponsor. It's a pleasure for, and an honor, bro. I hope to be yeah, on other ones, please. I would definitely, well, I definitely enjoy I wanna, this one. Thank I you for having me. I want you to stay on for the 3D uh, fighting game uh, topic because uh, if we can get Nupe in here, uh, we'll see. That you know, because that's going to be rather quick. But um, around the table, anybody have any final words before we log off? No, no words. All right. Okay. Start well. making, start making more creative games. I'm tired of FPSs and everything that's trying to mimic something else. Yeah, fine. It's, Me and first person no, shooters are almost it. all the same. <laughs> all right. So, animal <laughs> fans, <laughs> fighting game leagues fans, this has been our featured presentation where our esteemed guests and the animal and fighting game league crew. Catch us on the next Super Podcast Show. Peace.